Yep. Not much. Alex, when you look at you know what you were able to do with your bullpen and then uh, with the bench, or how satisfied are you with what you were able to do? Yeah, you know what? Um, every trade deadline, it's opportunities, you know, to impact the current season and even long term, right? Like I think we talked about this before. We got Iglesias last year. It was definitely for 22, but also knowing we had him for another three years beyond that. So you just don't know what's going to present itself. Like every, all 30 teams were engaged in talking, and we went through so many different scenarios and so many deals, and you just don't know what you're going to come away with. So uh, we knew we wanted to get someone established for that bench role in Lopez. Um, we knew we wanted to do some things in the bullpen, so getting Pierce Johnson is just a little earlier. Um, and then, you know, having a third left-hander, just Dylan Lee is going to be starting a rehab assignment real soon here. AJ's already back. Um, just having a third option out of the bullpen from the left side, you know, there's something early, you know, just gives Snit another option. And look, the next two months and even into three, you just don't know um, with health and performance and things like that. I mean, even in the postseason, we've had a lot of guys go, go down. So... Uh, you know, after today, we can't do anything else, really, and uh, you're just trying to insulate yourself. Is this kind of just like you said, another reflection of how much you prioritize depth? Because on the surface, you look and go, okay, that's more arms than you need, but it's not being... Yeah, and that's the biggest thing. Um, you know, you're sitting there, a lot of times you're working through, okay, if this guy comes back in August and this guy comes back in September and we have so many 40-man spots... And how's it going to work? We have guys on the 60-day IL and rehabs, and position players can go on rehab for 20 days, and guys that pitch can go on rehab for 30 days. Um, who has options? Who doesn't? Uh, but you know that between all that, something's probably going to happen. So uh, you'd rather overbook a little bit and realize that it'll probably work itself out. And if you're in a jam and you have a good problem, then that's a great position to be in because, you know, I, I think back, obviously, 21 is the best year we've had here. And, um, you know, we lost. We had guys like, like uh, Kyle Wright, I think, made two starts for us during the season that we activated him in the World Series. Davidson essentially missed the season, and then we add him. Uh, Dylan Lee, we add at, right at the end of the year, uh, end of September, and he's, he's starting a game in the World Series. So, you know, you just don't know, and uh, it's a little more challenging because you can't do much past today. Yeah. Yeah. So look, there's, um, you know, there was a lot of stuff that was out there. We definitely checked in on some starters, no doubt about it. What made it a little more challenging for us is, you know, and I, I'm checking with the staff, with the training staff all the time and trying to get a sense of how confident are they that guys come back, that when they do come back, how effective they'll be, how likely it would be a return to their previous le level of play. So... You know, our, our staff is very um, encouraged and very optimistic on Kyle Wright, on Dylan Lee, on Chavez. I mean, they're, they're pretty confident. So, um, you know, knowing that there's a high, high likelihood those guys are going to be back soon and uh, at the level that they were prior, it made the bar higher for us, right? Those are really good relievers. It's a really good starter. So the bar was higher for us to add. We would have done it if we could find an impact starter um, and then just dealt with – six starters when Kyle came back and just make the adjustments. So having too many good players isn't, isn't a problem, uh, but the bar was high. We saw some of the packages coming back for starting pitchers this year. What were teams asking for? Did you think it was maybe higher? Yeah, I never get into that. I know people say, oh, you know, prices are high, low, this and that. I, I just, I never buy into that kind of stuff. It's trade deadline. Um, you know, you go into a store, the price tag's on there. If you don't like it, go to some other store or don't buy it, you know, go home. So um, I'm not one that just evaluated or, you know, it's the reality of it. So um, look, we checked in. If there's deals that we like, we obviously would have done them. Um, but I never feel, I feel offers are always fair and in line because not everyone views players the same way. No, we, we could have gotten um, – I mean, well, we weren't in on every player that was traded, but um, off the top of my head without having the list in front of me, it, kind of similar to past years, um, there was – we had the players to get everybody, um, and um, it's just a matter of we were willing to do it. And obviously, we were only willing to do a few things, but, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, I, hopefully I'm here doing this a lot more, but um, – you're always going to be managing the short term and the long term, right? And you know that you have a chance this year. But I also know that we want to be good in 24 and 25 and 26. So 
Um, we could have sent young talent out the door that we believe would have impacted years going forward. I remember my first year, Max Fried's name came up in 2018. Max Fried wasn't Max Fried at that time. It would have been easy to do. You know, or Kyle Wright's name came up, and uh, Harris in the past, and, and so on. So um, Strider's name came up, I remember, in 2021. So, uh, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's just one of those things that at the time, we don't know if these guys are going to impact us, but if we're correct in some of our evaluations, maybe they impact the 24 Braves and the 25 Braves. And, and one more thing, notwithstanding your, your, your hope and expect some of these guys are going to come back, you, you, you guys have been involved in a lot of 7 to 5, 8 to 6, 10 to 7, whatever teams recently. If that's the kind of team you have going into the postseason, are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I just we're sitting here on the first August, right? And one, we got to get to the postseason, and that's I don't know when the season ends, thirtieth of September, first of yeah. I mean, two months from now, I, I just never I, we're so focused on today. And um, look, we've been the team that's chased other teams down, the teams that had big leads and weak. So I just we have a third of the season left. Um, there's a lot of games left, and you know I just don't know what we're gonna look like. When we get to, I know what the talent level is today, sure. How well are guys going to be doing? You know, last year I thought we had an unbelievable rotation, but when we got to the postseason, Max Fried was sick, Spencer Strider was coming off an ob oblique, um, guys were a little sore, tired, uh, maybe position players aren't swinging the bat well, so you just don't know where you're going to be. I mean, I can tell you in 21, we had concerns about our, the right handed arms in our pen. Uh, we, we called up Strider partly because he was an audition, a two outing audition Friday, Sunday against the Mets to see if he could be an option as the right side of the bullpen. Um, Tyler Matzik had been up and down. A AJ Minter had been optioned in 21. And then all of a sudden, you know, Will Smith obviously had a good season statistically, but he, had, you know, he definitely had some shaky moments towards the end. And then all of a sudden you get to the postseason and those guys were unbelievable. So. Um, you just don't know come playoff time uh, who's going to do what, how, how things are going to go. Um, and so yeah, I'll know what kind of team we have going into the postseason if we, if we do end up qualifying. You've had some very successful deadlines here, which always do your jobs kind of to worry. Do you ever, in general, do you ever leave the deadline just worried that you never did enough? You always, uh, no, I mean, you know, I always, I was just, you know, before I came down, you know, last year we did this meeting at like 6.05. We did the Riley's press conference and I want to make sure we did a little later so I could have a post-mortem with our, our staff. And I always want in the moment to, you know, get everyone's take. Like anything we would change now that the dust has settled, things are flying the last day. And everyone was in the same place. There's no, I always want to make sure there are any regrets at the outset. We can look back a year from now, sure. But Everyone felt good about the process, and you know it's fresh in, in the moment now. And I always want to try to learn from it. So um, you can't force deals, right? So look, there's plenty of deals we could have been here and say we acquired three players, four players uh, for a bunch of prospects that we really like. And maybe there's a halo effect for that. But three years from now, we might look back and say those would have been terrible deals for us. So um, with how we view our guys and the determinations that we made, we feel good with what was available to us. Year in and year out, but was the, the tone, the temperament of just the overall market down this year? Because so many teams are in the thick of things, whether it's a, a wild card or you know, a race, that there weren't many deals to be made because everybody believed Yeah, that. it definitely felt like there were less players available. You know, that's just the feeling. You know, again, I'm trying to remember past deadlines, and it just felt like there was less there. Um, and the things that were there, obviously, for us, we didn't choose to do. Um, but look, I, you know, I think it's good for the game too. You know, I think there's there's parity. People are hanging on to their players. People have a chance. I mean, you start looking at. I didn't actually go through it, but if you're looking at the division leaders in the NL, because obviously that's where I'm looking at the NL, and then the wild card contenders. You know, of the three that are currently in 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 the postseason, and then the teams that are just below the line. How many of those teams below the line bought? I'm going to guess three or four, top of my head, without studying it. That's great. You know, it's tough for buyers because it's like they're taking players off the board. Um, but I think it's good for the game. It's exciting games, exciting into September. Uh, but it definitely felt like there were more buyers this year, just on a quick anecdotal without having actually gone through it. How much did uh, Eller's past two starts maybe, you know, influence your evaluation if you're looking at where your team stands? You know? Yeah, I mean, we – Guys are going to go through ruts through the season, right? Guys are going to have hot months, cold months. I mean, so 
Um, I think my first year, I think Ozzy Albee's second half, 2018, wasn't as strong. We still thought he was a really good player, right? So, um, I don't know. You know, obviously he had a rough patch. Strider had a rough patch. Charlie said, you know, they've all had him at times. Max Fried and so on. So, Kyle, um, I don't know where the number is where you have concern. Is it four, five, six starts, seven starts, or how it looks? But, you know, generally speaking, we're looking at stuff. We're, you know, we're talking to the staff. Is there anything bothering him? So, he just had some bad outings or shaky outings for him. But... There was no underlying issues that we saw, so it, it wasn't even on my mind, to be candid with you. I mean, like, it was two, and then it's been two good ones, so even, even if it had gone. Yeah, good. because I don't know how many Kyle's, I mean, I don't know how many Bryce has made. He's got over 100 innings, right? I'm just, I don't even know what his numbers are right now, I know, it, but I, I don't know. He's made probably 14 starts or 12 starts or something, so the majority of them have been good, right? And you're going to have some shaky outings, but... Look, if a guy says he's complaining about some soreness or the velocity's down, stuff's down, that's a different story. But guys getting hit and just having rough outings, that's going to be part of it. And look, it's going to continue. We're going to have some in August. We're going to have players that slump at the plate. We're going to have guys that don't do well out of the bullpen. That's just part of it. You mentioned kind of evaluating your own system. I know there's probably no secret sauce, but how do you do that? Like, what's that process like? Making those determinations with the guys go through? I think you kind of go through um, yeah, who would you talk about, who you wouldn't talk about. Um, you know, there's certain guys you would talk about. So, for example, we got asked about certain guys, and we'd say, look, like, you know, there's guys that are harder to trade than others. And it might be, look, we'll move so-and-so, but it needs to be a core piece, someone we have under control for a long period of time. So, yeah, that, that player is available in the context of, a, you know, what we view as a long-term piece. So um, a guy that, you know, is scheduled to be a free agent, you know, these three, four players are off limits. We'll talk about this other group. So that, that's generally how, how these deals go. Anything else, Ralph? All right. Enjoy the game.